So installing on Windows. As we said in the tooling video, if you are running a 32-bit system, make sure you install version 10. Everything will work just fine for you. Some of the features in version 12 will not be available for you, but it will be just as well possible for you to run all of the queries. Now, if you have a 64-bit system, make sure you install version 12.2. And we'll go through the installation steps together. The installer is installed, we'll see the same exact thing for version 10 as version 12. We press yes. Let's close this window and... So over here you can see set up Postgres. So let's press next. It will specify where Postgres will be installed. Over here you can see it will be installed in Postgres 12. If you're installing version 10, this will say 10. We press next. And here you can see it's going to install Postgres server, an administration tool, stack builder and command line tools. Let's just select everything by default and press next. Here you can see in which directory you will store your data. Just leave it to the default. And here you can select your password for your database. So the password we said was root, root. And if we press next, we can now select the port, the address that Postgres will be available at. So that's 5432. Let's press next. And let's select the default locale. And here you can see everything that's going to be used during the installation. So let's press next and let's get this install going. Once this is done installing, you will have a full-fledged version of Postgres on your system. And whether you installed version 10 or 12, you'll be able to run the exact same commands. And so in the next video, what we'll be running through is how to import your databases and setting up those databases for you to start going through the course. So now that this installation is complete, it's going to ask you to run Stack Builder. We're not going to run that. And so now you have that full-fledged Postgres server. Where is it? Well, it's on your computer, in the C drive, it will be under program files. If you installed version 10, you will only have one program files folder, which will be x86, which refers to a 32-bit system. So if we go into program files, then you'll see Postgres. And for you guys, it'll be named 10. Here it's 12 because it's version 12. And if we go into the bin folder, here you can see all of the commands that we can possibly run, under which the PSQL command. And so in the next video, like I said, we will be running through how to set up your databases and how to import your databases to set yourself up for that success. But there is one more piece of software we have to install, which is Valentina DB. And so if you go to ValentinaDB.com, you can see here under download that there is the availability to install Valentina Studio, Valentina Server, Components for C. We want Valentina Studio. So let's view the releases in this category. And over here, you can see for, that it runs for Mac, Windows, and Linux. So if we press View Files at the bottom, what we'll see here is Valentina for Windows 64 and Valentina for Windows 62. And if you press Download, you will go through the exact same installer. And once you've installed Valentina DB, it will say that it is an unknown installer. You press More Info and you press Run Anyways. It is completely valid software but you do have to install it from the Valentina DB website. It's because it's an unknown publisher. And thus you will go through the same installation steps, installing Valentina Studio 10 and go through next, next, and then install. And once it's all installed, you should be good to go. And if we open Valentina Studio, well, it's going to ask you to install the Bonjour installer. We should also do this. Next, install, finish, and here's going to ask you to run Valentina Studio. And when we run Valentina Studio, you can register your copy for free if you press next. And if you fill in this, they'll send you a serial code for free. Right now, let's get out of this. And as you can see, it's already found my Postgres instance over here. And so our password was root. And here we can see that we don't have any databases yet. So the next video is going to be all about installing those databases.